welcome back. Right, today is something a little bit different. Um, as this is a tarantula enclosure channel, we are doing something a bit different because I'm not going to be in it. Um, I've got two guys here, uh, really good friends of mine. We've got Sir Adam from uh, Invertebrarian and Sam from Bug Realms. Both have come up with two cool ideas for like storage jars. Um, so I've got them both on to do a little bit about their um, storage jars and what they've done to make the enclosures. But to make it more interesting, uh, I want you to watch both videos, yeah? And you have to pick a winner. Um, I think they're both brilliant ideas, so I can't pick between the two myself. So at the end of the video, I'll show you how to pick your winner. And then um, the winner will receive some, a little something from me or send about a uh, spider or something. Um, just for, for thanks for taking part. Thank you very much guys for doing these videos for me. Um, awesome channels. Um, I'll put the links down below. Um, but yeah, they are one of my favourites. They've um, helped and supported my channel all along the way and I can't thank them enough. Um, obviously, Adam hasn't got as good hair as me, but you can't have everything, mate, can you? Um, so without further ado, um, first up, we'll go with the man himself, Adam. Invertebrarian and first and foremost before we even get into this I'd like to say a huge thank you to Steve for featuring me here on this video. So what I'm here to discuss is a design and enclosure concept that I came up with that I'm really proud of and I want to show off to you and yeah let's just have a wee look at it because it's pretty awesome if I may say so myself. So that is my wall of jars. Let's have a closer look and just see how brilliant these wee jars are. Here we have one of the jars. As you will see, these are old style storage jars. So chances are you, your gran, your uncle, your auntie, your friend, somebody has probably got these kicking about in a shed, in a cupboard, somewhere. I picked all of these up absolutely free of charge. Failing that, you could probably pick them up for not much out of a charity shop. So these are glass enclosures. I, for one, am a big fan of glass enclosures. These jars could be sat on edge and you could have multiples put together. Uh, in a display purpose, I have chosen to hang these on the wall. We've done this by taking a glass drill piece, drilling out a hole in the back, pushing through a piece of mesh. This just avoids any escapees and just taping that mesh into place, which from the back doesn't look very tidy, but from the front you don't really see it, depending on how you choose to decorate your glass enclosure. The enclosure is then simply hung by a hook on the wall, like so. The lid to these jars is mainly plastic when new. So what I've done is cut out the section around here, the section around here, and glue gunned mesh into place. This allows for very easy spraying and ventilation. The access is wide enough that I can easily get my hand in there, do the decorations or use tweezers and tongs to put pieces into place. As absolutely brilliant as I think this design is and unique in its own individual way, there have, there is flaws 
to the design. They are glass. If they are mishung or not hung properly and they fall, there is a risk of them breaking, although they are very sturdy tubs. I have dropped one. I thought I'd hang it on the, the hook properly, but it wasn't quite on the screw and it slipped and fell. The glass jar remained intact, showing that they are pretty tough. Eh, but unfortunately, the descent did cost me the life of a centipede plank, which wasn't great, but accidents do happen. And other than that, it's an absolutely brilliant, creative little way of using these old storage jars that people are likely to have kicking about somewhere. So if you've got a funky old little funny corner in a room, a little area that you're just not quite sure what to do, perhaps think about getting yourself some glass jars, drilling a wee hole in the back, sticking some screws in your wall and creating a lovely display piece that people just love to chat about and inquire about. And they're really useful for raising smaller things up to adulthood or dwarf species that could live in there quite happily all their life. Anyway, that is it for me. I hope you've enjoyed this idea. Uh, do let me know if it's something you're considering doing yourself, if I've inspired you in some way to uh, go and rummage those sheds, garages and charity shops. Anyway, thank you ever so much for watching. Thank you, Steve, for having me on it. I am the Invertibarian and goodbye for now. Thank you and goodbye. Right, thanks, Adam, for that. Um, awesome idea, awesome idea. Um, if I could get away with it, I think I could. Like, run a few around everywhere. Oh, but that's it. This is a kitchen. There's spider in the kitchen, in cupboards, in the living room, everywhere. So I'm sort of uh, trying to persuade a bit more. Um, but um, that's Adam. So remember that one. Next up. Sam. Hello, I'm Sam from the YouTube channel Bug Realms and I want to give a massive thanks to Steve for having me here today. Now what I'm actually here to show you is an enclosure design that I really, really like. So what we have here is my hexagonal enclosure. Now this is a plastic enclosure that has some really cool qualities to it. So as you can see, the lid does take away a lot of visibility, but I do plan on correcting that when I have the right sort of tools, perhaps putting a bit of acrylic in there or maybe even mesh. Now I want to show you the reasons why I love this enclosure. First of all, it's all the angles of visibility. Now I've unscrewed the lid here and when you look in, you can see the beauty of your setup really, really well. It's good enough for a camera to go inside if you're a YouTuber. This is my little Pete Mashala. And there's plenty of space inside to design it for any kind of grown on sling or juvenile. So I've made it as naturalistic as I can. I've taken the water dish out just for this video because it's the only part that doesn't look it. I just used a simple bottle cap and it kind of ruined the effect for today. Now, I did put my own ventilation holes in these and you can do so with ease. I use a soldering iron, but the best thing about these enclosures are two major points. On the top is an indent here and at the very bottom of the jar, it actually protrudes outwards, which sits in this indent and makes them stackable. Also, you have an indent to one side of the enclosure and it comes outwards at the other side making them connect sideways too. Let me show you a quick example of this. Here is a spare empty, and here is an additional spare empty. Now this is the part that protrudes out, like I told you, and if I were to get them in place, there we have it. Now while they're empty, they're not as stable, but as soon as you've got the substrate in, they will stand quite strong. But as you can see, this is actually on a small stand and I can give it a wobble, but it's not going anywhere. Now let me show you how these connect sideways. The outwards part against the inwards part and just like so. So I can move these together pretty easily now. Now I don't stack these any more than three high at a singular level, but you can do them taller when they are attached side by side as well because it gives them additional strength. Here is an example of six minor roach colonies that I have. So these roach colonies don't consist of any more than 25 roaches in each. And as you can see, these are pretty stable. When I'm moving it, I'm moving all the enclosures at once. None of them are tipping or falling. So I hope you enjoy my hexagonal enclosure design. And there'll be plenty, plenty more to come. I'm going to try and adapt as many of these as possible 
to the tarantula's natural habitat. So that's going to be it from me. Thanks for watching. I'm Bugman Sam from the YouTube channel Bug Rounds. Take care. Bye bye. Right, guys. That was Sam. Thank you very much, Sam. Awesome. Um, I can't pick between the two. Thank you very much to both of you for giving me the videos and able to share it to you guys because you tune in because you want to see enclosures and it's enclosures. So um, to pick between the two, um, obviously um, Adam Connolly is up north. So if you uh, want Adam to win a nice little spider or something, say up north in the comments. And if it's obviously Sam is down Plymouth Way. So if you want Sam to win, say down south. As usual, um, uh, please subscribe to their channels. They, they've been going a while now. Um, they've got a nice following. I never miss one of their videos. Awesome, guys. Um, as usual, like mine. Thumbs up. Subscribe. Ring the bell. Beep, 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 beep. And I shall see you later.